Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about a new type of isomerism which is known as geometric or cis trans isomerism. So in my previous video I spoke about um, op about structural isomers and structural isomers are isomers that the, they have the same molecular formula but they have different um, structural formulae. Stereoisomers are somewhat different because they have the same structural formulae, but the atoms have different orientations in space. Now that sounds quite complicated, but let me explain this. There are two types of stereoisomerism. At level 2 in CEA, you'll be assessed on your knowledge of geometric or cis trans isomerism, which I'm going to assess, I'm going to discuss in this video. At level 3, you're going to be talked to, you're going to be assessed about optical isomerism, which is sometimes known as enantiomers or enantiomerism, and that is part of the level three curriculum. That will be part of my next video. Okay, so stereoisomers, atoms are connected in the same order but have different orientations in space. Cis trans isomers, which are a type of stereoisomers occur when a compound has a double bond, which is something that won't rotate. So a single bond is easily and freely rotatable, but a double bond is fixed and doesn't rotate. When the two carbons in that double bond each have two different atoms or groups of atoms connected to them, then you end up with these cis-trans isomers. Now, before I get into examples of what this looks like, I need to make, talk about what I actually mean by this. Okay, so here is an example. And when we consider this as a cis, as geometric isomers, in these examples, these are two examples of 1,2-dibromoethene. And in both cases, we have a double bond where on each carbon there is a hydrogen atom and a bromine atom. So, this one is a perfect example of molecules that can exist as cis-trans isomers, geometric isomers, because it fits the definition. There is a double bond, which does not rotate, and each of the carbons, carbon 1 and carbon 2, contains two different atoms or groups of atoms. Okay? It doesn't matter whether there is a hydrogen on carbon 1 and a hydrogen on carbon 2. It just matters whether carbon 1 has two different atoms, and carbon 2 has two different atoms. And so when you look at these two examples, cis-1,2-dibromoethene and trans-1,2-dibromoethene, what you can see is actually the atoms are connected together in exactly the same order. Carbon 1 has a hydrogen and a bromine on it, carbon 2 has a hydrogen and a bromine on it. But if you look at these two molecules, you can see, I hope, that they are not identical to each other, especially when you consider that a bromine is something like 70 times bigger than a hydrogen atom. So it's actually this massive, massive atom compared to this teeny tiny hydrogen. So if I was to like build proper spatial models of them, they would look completely different, even though they have the same atoms connected. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about different orientations in space. Now, what makes the one on the, mole the molecule on the left the cis isomer and the molecule on the right the trans isomer? You can see when you look at the two hydrogens. And in the left hand structure, you'll see that the two hydrogens are both on the top of the double bond. Whereas in the right hand isomer, the trans isomer, one hydrogen is down and the other hydrogen is up. And that is the difference. It's not a lot to look at, but it really does make a difference in terms of the reactivity, the properties, all sorts of things. So these two molecules will have different melting points, different boiling points. They may have different solubilities. They will certainly react to form different products. Um, even though they look virtually identical, the difference between a cis and a trans isomer. 
Now, when it comes to exam questions about geometric isomers, and the same thing can be said, quite frankly, for optical isomers as well, your common exam question will ask you to identify whether a given compound might, might exist as geometric isomers, or which compound out of a selected range will exist as cis-trans isomers. So whenever you're answering these sorts of questions, you need to think, okay, what is the definition and how do these molecules meet or fit the definition? So let me give you an example. This was a question in the 2017 exam, question 2 out of 2017. And the first part of the question asks you to draw the four alkene isomers for the compound C4H8. And there's a table there, which I haven't included in this slide. And the second part asks you, identify the, asks you to identify the compounds that exist as cis and trans isomers. In fact, two of the four isomers are the cis and trans isomers. So let me just come back and show you these four isomers first. Okay, so the first thing when you're asked to identify the four isomers of C4H8, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start off and you're going to draw four carbons in a row. And I'm going to be really slack right now and I'm not going to draw all the hydrogens on. I'm just going to show we've got four carbons with a double bond between carbon one and carbon two. We've got four carbons with a double bond between carbon two and carbon three. If I put the double bond at the end between carbon three and carbon four, that is just the reflection of the first one. But what I can do is also do that thing. But that only gives me three isomers. The question quite clearly asked for four. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put some hydrogens onto this molecule. But I'm only going to put the end hydrogens on. What I can do at this point with my last two hydrogens is I could put two up. That is cis but 2 en or 2 butene. I could also draw that same molecule, put a double bond in here, put my hydrogens on, that was six, and this time. I'm going to put one hydrogen up, one hydrogen down, and now I have trans 1,2-butene. Oh, sorry, trans 2,3. Okay, let's start again. This time I have trans but 2 n Period, end of story. Now, of course, if you're drawing this out in an exam question, you're going to draw all the hydrogens on all of the molecules. But, you know, I'm drawing this on a computer screen and I'm feeling lazy. So, we've started off, we've drawn the four isomers. Okay, the next part of the question asks you to identify the compounds that are cis and trans isomers. So those are the two that I drew specifically. And to justify your choices and explain why only those two compounds are cis and trans isomers. Okay, so if we go back and we have a quick look at those structures again. Okay, at this point I've now drawn the hydrogens onto these molecules. And this is really important when it comes to justifying why these molecules over here can exist as cis-trans isomers, but the ones on the left cannot. And so if we look at those molecules on the left, and we think about what's going on, we think about the definition. So the requirements for cis-trans isomers are that we must have a double bond, and both of these molecules have a double bond, and that the carbons on either side of the double bond must be attached to two different atoms or groups of atoms. And this is where these fall down. So if we have a look at the top one first, but one n we can see that the first carbon here actually has two hydrogens attached. So it cannot exist as cis trans isomers because it does not meet the requirements. Similarly, if we look at the one at the bottom, 2-methyl-prop-1-ene, this one actually doesn't meet the requirements on two counts. It does have a double bond. Carbon 1 has two hydrogens on it, and carbon 2 has two 
methyl groups on it. So neither of those meet the requirements that are within the definition. So let's have a quick look. So the model answer was this, and this is what's provided on the NZQA website. So it says, to form cis and trans isomers, a carbon-carbon double bond is required, and the atoms or groups on each of the carbon atoms of the double bond must be different. So that is our definition. And if you write that, you will get achieved. Just learn the definitions. Please, just learn the definitions. That is my biggest plea to you. Okay, now we have identified... The next paragraph says, structures 3 and 4 both have a carbon-carbon double bond. This bond is rigid, so it does not allow rotation to occur around it. Both structures 3 and 4 have two different atoms or groups on each of the carbon atoms of the double bond. Each of them has a hydrogen and a CH3. So this bit is identifying which isomers meet that definition. And it's providing justification and reasons. So that is pretty much, if you've got your definition and you've got that sort of statement in there, then that's what we're looking for as a merit point. The final bit could involve either talking about a bit more detail as to which one is cis and which one is trans, or you could also talk about why the other two do not form cis-trans isomers. And both of those things would most likely be getting you excellence. But think about this, your definition is your achieved, your merit is your connecting several ideas together, and then your excellence is providing a full answer. And that is what we are looking for in NCEA for excellence. In my next video, I will be going through some information about optical isomers, and I hope to see you then if you are taking level 3 chemistry. If you're taking level 2, please don't look at the next one, optical isomers, because it is not relevant for you. See you soon.